Hola, buenos días. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to thank the Zero Project for the invitation, first of all, for being the moderator of this panel in the Zero Project 2021 pro program, where we will talk about the public programs and their in working inclusion models for the participation of the municipality of the county of Helsinki, Finland, and Providencia here in Chile. But just for introductions of what our presenters will be mentioning today, I'd like to briefly tell you what is Chile Manora and why are we here today, showing what are the programs and how the support is regarding working inclusion. Chile Valora is a public service by law, which is a purpose is to recognize and certify the working competencies of their workers, never mind how they acquire them. In this sense, the support, to, uh, support of working inclusion doesn't really matter what type of a disability a person may have, as they can show that the person is competent enough, has enough knowledge, skills, to be able to develop a working function which is defined by the productive sectors. And this is one of the basis of Chile Valora, which is social tripartite dialogue. It's not us as the National Commission or certification regarding working competences who decide what are the standards, what are the competences necessary that a person may have to develop themselves in the productive sector. If not, it's the sector itself through a tripartite dialogue workers employers and public sector, which agree based on methodologies which are standardized by Chile Valora, to mention what are those competencies. We have more than 900 competencies that you can see in our webpage in chilevalora.cl, where you will find what are those skills which different productive sectors require to be able to develop a working function. Chile Valora somehow agrees with social equality, but one third of employ uh, employees here in Chile do not have a certification or professional uh, certification either. Nevertheless, do, they do have, and as I say, a trade to develop themselves. Uh, they may be they've been working for 30 years now in that trade, in the mining sector, construction, tourism, where they've learned this trade by practice, or maybe handed down by uh, within the family but they can do well their job. And that's the value of Chile Valora, recognizes non-formal trade. Now, but what, what have we done and how is that certification of an assessment process fun for work? We create institutions, denominated certification and assessment uh, centers of certification, which accredit themselves before Chile Valora to assess those occupational profiles which they show they they, can. they are experts. And as I said previously, Chile Valora does not have any restrictions, does not generate any type of uh, filters, as the person can only demonstrate within a process, not simulation, if not in their workplace itself. Simulations are today what the pandemic are, uh, conditioned us. And nevertheless, these centers with the evaluators and certifiers by from Chile, Chile Valora, they measure these skills that a person may have to develop their working development. Their work. So what have we done? Chile Valora is an institution which has more than 12 years now. We are still starting off with more than 20 productive sectors along the country of Chile because national assessments and uh, we're advancing homologating certification with the uh, Pacific Alliance, countries of the Pacific Alliance, which due to the migration laws means that people who have certain competences and have the uh, certifications necessary can be recognized in Chile. Here in Chile, well, I'd like to also say that what, we, what, have, what we've been doing, we have, we have more than 135,000 certified workers where nearly 36% are women and approximately 1,000, oh, 176,000 are people who have mentioned some sort of a disability. It's important also the value of uh, Chile Valora or the certification of competences for people with disabilities because they allow them to show 
or they know how to do their job properly, never mind whether they have or not certain disability. We have certified young people with disabilities, cognitive disability, which come from companies or work in special places where the company have trained them, just like anyone else with their tutors. But then Chile Valora comes and recognizes and certifies them like a third party, in fact, which allows this young man or young woman to show that they are competent and that they can do their work properly. Now, the experience that I'm talking about was awarded back then, a couple of years ago, by Zero Project through the foundation of the school within there, where we have been working also not only in certifying young people, women, adults who have a, a sort of a disability, but Chile Valora, together with Chile Valora, we are building an occupational profile which will be in charge of the working inclusion within companies. Last year, the Congress of Chile modified the work, working code where they will require companies with more than 100 workers starting from November next year that they count with one person who is certified by Chile Valora who can ensure and in charge of the working inclusion within the company. So we're talking about a working inclusion which is totally comprehensive. Currently, we find ourselves in the process of construction of this standard to define what are those competences, skills, knowledge, and uh, what people may must have, or the person may have, which can allow an inclusion which is totally comprehensive with a view, a 360 degree view from food, uh, commuting, uh, coexistence with other colleagues, etc. So there are many, many other variables. I'm sure that you're the experts and that's what we'll find out more with these two uh, councils which will show us which is their models of uh, working inclusion. Because we do believe, and Chile Valora, we are aware that we are all equal and that we can show by our work and we can be recognized by companies, by workers and by society as a whole. As I said previously, it can allow workers who have acquired their competences in their workplace, they can say, I know how to do my job well. So I invite you all to continue following Chile Valora, our competences, our standards. We have certified people with disabilities in different areas as electrical installers, uh, sellers, uh, salespeople, logistics assistants, etc. Because once again, the invitation is to add yourself to Chile Valora to recognize that certificate because it doesn't matter the disability that the person may present. We bet for an inclusion, or work and inclusion of gender and disability as a whole, because as we can show that they can do their work properly, they will be recognized by Chile Valora and the Chilean state. So with this introduction, I'd like to thank you to our panelists, and we will therefore begin with their presentations. Thank you very much. Now, I would like, like to give the floor to Canerva Madel. She's from the municipality of Helsinki. She's an working instructor in Finland. She's a social worker in the uh, University of Diak in Helsinki, and she specializes in the welfare of families. She has carried out an exchange, Santiago Chile, from the University Mayor uh, and Psychopedagogy. Uh, she has been working six years in social services in the Council of Helsinki in the Department of Employment with the support as working instructor. For, since uh, 2021, she has developed a project Helsinki with more skills for work, where she tests the method of employment with the support of new group of clients. So we give the floor to Canerva within this presentation and to let us know what's the model of inclusion that they're using at the moment. Thank you very much.
Hola, ¿cómo están? Hello, how are you? My name is Kander Van Bedel and I am a work instructor and I work in the social services in Helsinki, capital of Finland, here in Northern Europe. I work for the service of supported employment and I've been for six years working for the service. I am from Finland, but my husband is from Chile. That's why I speak Spanish. And I apologize beforehand if I say something wrong, but this is not my mother tongue. I've always loved Latin America. And that's why it's an honor for me to be able to give this presentation to you. So thank you so much, Zero Project. Greetings from Helsinki, everyone. In this picture, you see my colleagues and myself celebrating, and the picture was taken just before coronavirus. And I wanted to help this picture because I feel it represents the good feeling that we have among the colleagues that work on the service. This is work that we do from our heart. Well, here we have some general information regarding our service to support employment in the city of Helsinki. It was created in 1995 and it is the first service of supported employment here in Finland. And we are part of the social services of the municipality of Helsinki. And also we received the funding from the city in the service of employment there are 15 work instructors and our service has more or less 300 customers this is a service for people with disabilities with cognitive disabilities within the autistic spectrum and beyond any type of diagnosis for us is important to figure out whether the person is motivated to find employment and that they also have the need to do that. Motivation is a key. In our service, we have been developing a new project which is called Helsinki with more skills to work. Now I'm working on this project and we are trying out the same idea of the service, but with a group Oh, with a broader set of customers. And in this case, it can be people that have had difficulties finding employment and that have had different problems such as alcoholism for, or uh, mental uh, disorders. And we have uh, two instructors working with the customers of this uh, workshop. Now, what is our service like? The service of supported employment is a personalized service that focuses on the skills of the customer. So the process and how everything moves forward depends on the person and what type of skills and attitudes uh, they have. We do not see them in groups, but in personal appointments. Now, something very important about our service is that the customer may have the service for as long as they wish. The lasting of the service is also customized, and we even have some customers that have been with us from the 90s. The service is free of cost for the customers and also free of cost for the employers. Who pays for this is the municipality of Helsinki. This is a picture here that shows what the process looks like for the customer in our service. First of all, they have to apply because we are part of the system of social services. So the social worker finally makes the decision depending on whether the person is interested in finding a job and also if there is a need for them to do so. Once we start working with them, usually we meet uh, several times here in our offices and together we figure out the skills of the customer and we plan ahead for the uh, look for a job, for the process of looking for a job. Now, along that process, we may look for different companies and different uh, job offers. Of course, we continue along and if there is an interview, we may go with the customer to support them, but of course, always with the purpose of the person being at the center of the situation. 
Then comes a very important step, which is the onboarding process. Most of the time we are there supporting our customers and also encouraging them, but also for them to learn the different tasks within their job position. And of course, we're not experts in each job position, but more than that, we support them in their learning instead of us teaching them. And of course, in each job positions, there are rules and social norms that are not written. And people with difficulties to read social situations may find it very useful to have the support of a work instructor. It could be something as simple as to where it is correct to leave your lunch or your coat in the morning. Sometimes some people are not used to sharing with different people and working instructors can serve by giving the example regarding how to interact with each person without bias. Then we do an employment follow-up, which is a phase that may last longer or less time. We have monthly appointments with the customer in their job location and also with our supervisor. And that way we are able to give support to both entities to prevent any type of issues that they may have then. If for whatever reason the employment ends, we continue with a new search. Now, this is a little bit about the work that we do in collaboration with the employers. We like to think that the vision of the employer is just as important as the vision, as the vision of our customers, and we have high respect for the employers, and we know that without them, there is no employment also the employment is not successful unless the employer is happy as well. So the idea is that the employer and the employee are happy. And that way we are able to say that this is a win-win situation. All the work instructors help looking for a job and contact the companies. Also, a couple of years ago, we decided to try out a new system where two work instructors are specialized in contacting companies and also creating connections with them and to look for job positions for all the customers that are part of our service. And it has been very good and it has been very helpful for all of us. Now, how do we help employers? We help them, for instance, allocate tasks and also change the job descriptions if necessary. We can also help them pre-screen or recruit certain uh, people for certain positions. And we learn to know the skills of our customers. We can also help business people, giving them advice regarding the benefits for the employers. Because in Finland, we have a system by which the government may help you cover 30 up to 100% of the costs if you give employment to a person with a disability or that has had difficulties entering the job market. And with that, they're able to help with cover costs such as salaries, taxes and pensions. So we give support for the customers and also for their employers throughout the time the position lasts from the beginning of the process until the person leaves. So throughout this period of time, we provide support in all sorts of situations in different circumstances. And with that, that is the end of my presentation. And thank you so much, everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Canerva, for your presentation. We will uh, ask you a few questions uh, after the next presentations uh, on the material you're using for the inclusion. Uh, so now let's look at the model of uh, Providencia in Chile, and we'll have uh, Solange Motalvo, who's the chief uh, of uh, employment of the municipality. She's a public, uh, uh, she works in public relationship, uh, and she has worked uh, in public and private, uh, with public and private teams. Uh, and uh, she has worked with uh, work inclusion, uh, management of talents and diversity through the public uh, private network uh, together with Solange, 
we will have uh, Cecilia Ahumada, also from the municipality of Prenha. She's in charge of uh, the program. She's a therapist uh, for uh, work inclusion, and she works also with the elder and the different uh, diverse groups. She has a great experience uh, with uh, working with inclusion from the public and private uh, sector. So now I would like to uh, invite them to show their inclusion model uh, that the municipality is using at the moment time of uh, Providencia. Thank you very much, Loreto. Like she mentioned, my name is Cecilia. I'm a work therapist. Uh, and I will tell you a little about uh, what the program, uh, uh, the inclusion program is, uh, the labor program is uh, for Providencia municipality. So the program uh, is a public program of the municipality of Providencia that as a legal perspective seeks to promote the social and labor inclusion of people with disabilities in the open labor, uh, labor market. In addition, there is a companies uh, who receive support uh, to implement strategies uh, that encourage diversity and inclusion within them. So this is a project uh, that helped this uh, diversity. And also to tell you, this uh, project began in 2013 in response to the demand of people with disabilities uh, who were looking for employment and who until then had no personalized support uh, for their job search. Uh, and many, many people uh, with uh, some kind of uh, disabilities were coming to the municipality and could not find work. Uh, so facing this need, uh, we decided uh, to uh, create a program that is uh, decided by the municipality where we choose uh, some people who will be included in the program. And since uh, 2014, it's a program that is financed by the municipality itself. Uh, and from, uh, from uh, 2014 and now, we are helping both uh, the people with disabilities uh, to find job and the companies uh, to uh, provide them. Uh, so what is uh, the essential elements? Uh, so we can say there's two major elements here. One is accessibility, and we can consider the accessibility from the uh, infrastructure to the service uh, to the services of the labor inclusion program, which can be used in a safe and friendly way by any uh, person. But uh, we also try to uh, make also improvement that will allow that the services can be accessible from the attention and to the people to, to the public, uh, but also to have a program uh, of uh, maybe uh, a system of sign language for, for the people who need it. Uh, or uh, different programs that, that we have uh, developed, uh, also uh, work uh, with uh, easy language and the plain language, uh, and also accessible accessibility for anyone. Uh, and the second element, essential element uh, that we have in the program is what we call the articulation. We believe that it's very important to work uh, with the connection with other actors, institutions in our territory. So it's key to achieve support in areas of health, uh, social education and work for the full and effective inclusion of the users uh, in our program. So this is why we connect with the uh, areas of health, uh, education, uh, different companies, uh, also the social development of the municipality, um, the, the social development department from the municipality. And, and what we try is to facilitate uh, uh, these uh, support uh, for all these uh, different areas. Uh. So our program of inclusion through the alliance that we've developed, uh, we were able uh, to develop different processes and but we've done it in different steps. Uh. So the first uh, step that uh, the people uh, uh, who are looking for, for a job and a sit in our program, they, they go through an initial uh, interview it's at least one hour long interview where we evaluate uh, the functionality, the work history, the support ne network they have uh, to be able to see if they have all the, the, the capacities and all the, the um, network uh, they, they might need to be able to uh, work. Uh, 
So after this uh, semi-structured, uh, initial semi-structured interview, we go to the second uh, and we'll try to find what is the path uh, that uh, the people will need uh, to go through to be able to achieve their goals. Uh, so we have a, a counseling uh, department and and it, and it's a very personalized uh, system to, to do it uh, according to the, their need. And we try to provide them all uh, the tools uh, that they can they can find uh, that they can, they can need uh, to be able to, to to find the work they're looking for. So they can out self manage their own uh, search. Uh, so with this uh, consulate, we can help them maybe to write uh, a CV, to be prepared for an interview. Uh, so we do an interview training, uh, job application support, so, so et cetera. It's, it's a, a whole counseling in relation on how to find uh, the work. And once uh, they are ready to, to find a job, uh, we make this connection, the connection between the, the public, uh, these people, and uh, the, the companies uh, who are ready to welcome people with disabilities and to and we, we train them and how to make uh, their interviews more inclusive and how to make people feel uh, uh, more relaxed so we make a pre filtering uh, between the companies and the people who are going to go so like any so is, is going to be an interview like they will do with any uh, other employee they want to interview, but with a cert, certain, a few, uh, including a few details uh, that have that are connected with disabilities. So this is why we need to uh, counsel them uh, what are the proper adjustments they should go through, and maybe give them a, a, a talk, maybe talk to the to also to the, to their bosses, the different managers, uh, for them to understand the need. Uh. So once uh, the person, uh, we, we do not stop there, then we have a, a program of uh, accompaniment where we make an evaluation to, of the work of the person, but also we talk to the worker here for, for him to, or her to evaluate uh, his or her work uh, to identify on time things that need to be improved, things that need to be highlighted, but also problem that we need to solve that, uh, that could help uh, for this person to uh, stay in this. This is our main goal is, is uh, for people to stay and uh, continue growing in their work. In relation to numbers uh, from 2013, where we began this program to 2020, 388 uh, a person, uh, people with disabilities were enrolled in the, in the program, 128 uh, were hired, and, and the highest uh, income are between 640 uh, US dollars and 700 compared to the Chile, Chile's uh, minimum monthly income of uh, 420. So now I will give uh, the microphone to Solange to continue with the presentation. Like Cecilia was mentioning, our program of uh, work inclusion, we believe that, that the success factors uh, that have uh, facilitated and promoted the, the articulation and proven uh, the proper tools uh, are the different alliances uh, that we uh, created. So in the, in the program uh, of uh, work inclusion in 2018, we created uh, an agreement uh, that was created uh, called Red Empleo Inclusivo, which aims to provide real opportunities for labor uh, inclusion to people with disabilities, not only to people, but also to articulate these collaborative work with uh, the companies. Since uh, 2018, uh, we've uh, already uh, signed an agreement with 18 companies, uh, and we have been able to carry out uh, awareness raising uh, processes on labor inclusion, where we um, gave a talk uh, and we presented uh, all the needs uh, for work inclusion, guiding them, consulting them, and also to be able to uh, reach uh, to a proper uh, job placement and then a follow-up uh, uh, later on. 
So we, we help them with uh, presentations, uh, uh, including uh, inclusions in language, uh, tools also to make a proper uh, adjustment because many companies might consider that they need to make big investment uh, to include the people with disability. And we try to guide them. And most of the time, the uh, adjustments uh, do not include the high um, expenses for the companies. So we, we wanted to share with uh, Cecilia also some of uh, the some of the testimonials are from participants on the labor uh, inclusion program. So, so we had uh, different uh, testimonials. For example, Sophia, uh, she's been working uh, over four years. Uh, and she says, uh, thanks uh, to the support of the inclusion program. I am no more independent. Uh, I help my family with money. And I'm thinking of looking for another job uh, where I can learn more things and develop more skills. And then we have Pablo Aguilar. He works in administration. And he's been working for over two years in, in a human resource company. And he wanted to share his testimonials, testimonial um, so, uh, with, uh, in relation to the work we've given him. Uh, and we've helped him uh, from uh, the interview because he, uh, he had the problem with interviews. and. And then we have uh, Luigina Arata, and she's been working uh, for a year uh, in a university as a part of the staff, management staff. And she says the program has been a great contribution and help. And uh, we, through the work she, she was able to achieve, it, it has provided uh, her uh, well-being and peace of mind. And she felt that she couldn't, she, she was not able to find a job because of her capacity and through the program, uh, she made it. Like uh, every program, uh, we need uh, uh, financing. And uh, of course, the municipality has uh, a direct uh, financing uh, for um, furniture and, 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 and to, prov to, to have the uh, space for, also for a program. This program is uh, financed also by uh, external resources. Uh, in our specific case, uh, we receive uh, receive uh, funds also from the National Training and Employment Service, FENSE, uh, and they, they have an agreement uh, to be able uh, to cover mostly uh, staff costs uh, for psychologists, uh, the, the work, social workers, and other uh, staff members. And we're also always uh, we we look uh, for funds through the public uh, uh, some some public funds. So there's a public innovator network of uh, government laboratories, and we were able uh, to we were able to to now start working online with uh, people uh, disabilities and and what we try to do is uh, through those uh, different uh, funds uh, is not to i mean to, to to always be able to to get the different programs uh, and we always have uh, new alliances for science uh, and we try to to be up to date and to be able to to, pro to provide all the information they need both from the national and public uh, funds but also some institutions who are providing uh, specific funds so we also wanted to share you some of the challenges that, that we have from the municipality of Providencia. And we believe that, that the work with the user follows certain uh, uh, processes. We want to strengthen, strengthen the work we have with companies to, to be a strategic ally to uh, the uh, different companies uh, and to help them, uh, accompanying them for the construction of diversity and inclusion policies uh, and uh, to gradually encouraging uh, companies uh, to manage uh, the labor uh, inclusion of people uh, with disabilities. So we're very interested that, that the work should be done from the heart of the company 
and we also believe that one of the best ways to do is uh, to elaborate uh, for themselves uh, policy, those policies and we want uh, to uh, we want them to see the, the different companies to see the municipality as a as a close ally and we could do very a, a lot more actions and to open many more doors for uh, labor inclusion uh, for people with disability thank you very much Bueno, muchas gracias, Solange. Y... Thank you very much, Solange and Cecilia, for your presentation. We will open up a Q&A session to be able to learn a little bit more in detail. What are the experiences that uh, have been mentioned here? I have a question for Canerva here. I think it's very important that you can tell us how do you discover what are the skills and abilities required in companies, firms, the model and the support program with employment, or for employment. The main challenge that all countries have, and that's why it's important to, to look uh, outside here, what is, as we see here in Chile, the match between the, the supply and demand? I mean, what is the work that the council does to, or the borough, to seek for that person who has the competences uh, that the company requires to be more productive? Canerva, I'll give the floor to you so you can tell us a little bit how it works. Thank you very much for your question, Loreto. Um, yeah, it's a very good question. I think that the first thing, it's the process at the beginning. The process of getting to know the client well is very important. And we do it through conversations. Sometimes we are seeing um, some feedback that we have had uh, from previous places. Um, and sometimes if the person or the company itself feels that uh, they need to do like a little uh, internship before, like a practice uh, period before receiving a salary and seeing how it works out, it's possible. And with the knowledge that we have about how, how the companies work what kind of uh, customers we have we could see if we can do a match but there are things that you can never be so sure about sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but it is time of our work life so there could always be um, things that do not turn out well but many times it could be a success thank you Thank you very much, Canerva, for your answer. Very interesting, the experiences that you have. And I'd like to know a little bit more and ask uh, Solange and Cecilia for them to tell us a little bit about the, the follow-up process or the monitoring process that you have with the elder or the young people who you're working with, people over the 60 years old. What's the process, the follow-up process to ensure a working position of people with disabilities. Well, Loreto, I can answer a little bit of this. Our follow-up process, we have a monitoring program for a year, which is agreed with, with the worker, and we propose at least one year where present visits are carried out. Physically, physically, but now we're turning things up. We want a personal sort of follow-up or monitoring. And now we're continuing with online follow-up through WhatsApp. Different platforms, and, uh, but usually we visit the company. We go to the company or firm where the, the worker work is actually uh, located. And we make sure that there's a contract here under all the parameters demanded by law. We request also companies a certification of contract where there are certain conditions or minimum conditions. For example, it's under the working code, it's a contract under the working code for at least three months to understand the permanency in their working position. 
And after we can obtain this guarantee of contract, we carry out a visit. At the beginning, it's a very intense process where the person, ent the person enters work, and during the first two weeks, we must carry out this uh, contact. And we apply two guidelines, one of self-assessment, self-diagnosis of the worker, where we assess three essential pillars, working habits, social aspects and relational aspects, and everything regarding productivity and performance of functions. And these three areas, the worker is assessed and they assess the person as well. We have a guideline with a scale from zero to seven, which allows us to classify or c compare. For example, the first monitoring, we, we match it with the second one. So according to the scale, how it improved, what went better, what went worse, so we can actually see what do we have to work on. And also there's a qualitative observation, a report, which this guideline contains a report where we tell the company what are the significant aspects or events. And we have feedback and suggestions of what to do now onwards, because it's a very, it's a, it's a process which is very much in agreement between the person and the worker, but the follow-up. This monitoring process is to, deli to, to deliver, to give tools for this person can continue in, in their working positions with, together with assessment instructions for a person with any sort of a disability, agree upon time where meetings can be carried out for dialogues regarding the performance of what they're doing. So the truth is that each position, each company has their own complexities. There are companies where positions are maybe more operative, operative or lower qualification and the others a bit more relational and how instructions are given. But it's a, but a professional company with why qualified positions, maybe the monitoring or follow-ups is more associated to the performance of the function itself and targets. Uh, so we have to give that follow-up to the person with disabilities and the, the head of the office or the head. Many management positions are, don't know about this. So we have to company also with them with this, with these processes. Thank you very much, sir. This is very much many, many challenges that the council has. And as Karina was showing, the challenge of the council or the borough in Helsinki as well. And before we conclude this uh, session of Q&A, I would wanted to ask Solange, maybe she can help us there from the uh, Council of uh, Providencia, the municipality of Providencia. How has been the reception on behalf of the com of companies? Or have companies uh, understood uh, this program? How do they take it? And I wanted to ask everybody who is with us in this uh, conference, people who are not from Chile, I want to tell them that Chile here about three years ago, and Solange, I know you're experts there. Three years ago, the law of work and inclusion was uh, implemented, 21015, where it obliges companies, well, it uh, obliges companies with more than 100 workers to have 1% of those workers with the disability. So it's been very complement, uh, very complicated to implement this law. I'm sure that you as a council, you can tell us what's the main challenges that you've presented because due to the information that I have, if I did not hire people with disabilities, I could deliver annual resources to some sort of foundation maybe destined to work in inclusion subjects. And I think it's been easier for companies therefore just to deliver some sort of annual contribution to companies or foundations, experts in work and inclusions, than hiring people with work and inclusion. That's why the modification to the code or working code or the law 21,275, that was uh, telling you in my presentation at the beginning, where it will mean that companies with more than 100 companies from now, from next year onwards, must be certified by Chile Valora in competences in knowledge and behavior focused on comprehensive uh, work and inclusion for people. So Solange, what's the 
perception of companies with this? Do they see it as something productive? Do they see it as a need? Or as we say here in Chile, it's just something that they have to do. It's not truly what, uh, or maybe they won't really give them the possibility of contributing with the company. What do you think? Very good question. And I believe that this gives for a, another dialogue. Just like to tell you a little bit about our experiences in our inclusion program here in Providencia. It's been a very complicated, uh, it's been complicated uh, working with companies and uh, that many times we find ourselves with many organizations, with many companies which still have or not, don't know about the law or don't understand the processes. And in fact, how to publish an inclusive offer, position for work. So the challenge is there for companies. We're including this law and not to fall into malpractice. We try to also guide them, accompany them and and train them and not to fall into these malpractices because there's a, the, the law is there for a reason. And even though maybe for many organizations, this law just was passed without much preparation or methodologies, nor a lot of time to be, to for companies to be prepared for this. But sometimes changes have to be drastic. Uh, to, uh, to remove a little bit more or, or to shake the, the awareness of organizations because they do have to bet on differences and how they work on that inclusion and diversity from within to be able to promote and open work positions. So the modification to the law, which will they will have a, a specialist of uh, social inclusion within the area of human resources now. I think this also can be very positive for companies which had been working or want to do things properly. And for those who don't, which prefer to pay projects of a work in inclusion, maybe this could be a challenge for them too even though that we see progress in these laws, uh, there are amendments within the law, it's because this, this is gonna be a topic that's gonna to evolve in time. So as a company, I have to prepare myself if that's where the future is, uh, is going. So I have to also prepare concrete actions within my organization. And if there are account, uh, support from the council, you can, must take the opportunity of uh, generating these alliances with the Department of Employment or with the of, offices of our disabilities, many foundations that are carrying out enormous work with a commitment and real motivation for encouraging, or for including people with disability, and also eliminating a lot of myths and prejudice as well. Creating a position, a position that they've never had to be able to include someone with disability or from many positions that a person with a disability can carry out. They can do any sort of work. We find people with uh, disabilities who are specialized professionals with uh, diplomas that are very much prepared, who have not had the possibility to work in a company or they've never given the possibility, so or the chance. So that's the area that we're urging now. If uh, Chile is promoting and generating this sort of a work in inclusion, companies must add to this project because at the end of the day, it's better for, for all processes of human resources to bet on diverse selection processes, having inclusive processes and not just be left with doing the same processes as always or having all these these myths or barriers which are more social than what really can be carried out or performed. Thank you very much, Solange. I think that the experience of Chile here in Finland 
have given us the challenge regarding work and inclusion. So it doesn't really matter in what part of the world we are. I think it's a challenge of social equity or equality of being more integrated and less discriminating in all senses of the word. Today, we see a huge need from women to be able to also install ourselves in the working world and we are recognized all competencies. And the same happens with people with disabilities. And mention a little bit what uh, Solange was saying there. The work that Chile Valor is doing is it will work with more than 100 companies, an ecosystem, as I say, but it will make available not only the possibility that uh, they can fulfill the law, and apply with the law, and cert uh, be certified in November next year, but the main challenge is the preparation, as Solange said. Chile Valora also will build the training plan. So training programs from the council or boroughs can help to prepare companies to train these people they may be managers or worker managers, but we train what is re truly required. I mean, these are one of the main challenges that at least in Chile we have to train what it really is required. And that's why the value and the contribution of Chile Valora in matters of certification of competences, where what I did not comment previously and I see Paulina here, I'm making the most. We also have today the certification for sign language, because we do believe that these are relevant work, that's very relevant, which allows social integration and recognition that the country has to give to these uh, this work, which sometimes they learn because a family member maybe has the need uh, to speak in uh, sign language. So I invite you all to learn about more about uh, Chile de Valora, the examples from the municipality or the Council of Providencia, and in the case of Finland as well. So I'd like to end my words now, mentioning the challenge, all the experiences here, is collaborative work. This is not just a work of a few. If not, we require companies, workers, this public-private articulation that was mentioned previously as well but also from families behind. The challenge of uh, families, and I saw it with the experiences with the young people that I was telling you about. If it were, weren't for those, for that family, that mother, father, brother, sister, siblings that can say, look, you can do it. You can work in whatever you wish. I believe we would not be talking about this topic right now. So this is truly a view. It's a, it's a task for all different countries, as we saw as well, but in different roles, public policies, and, uh, as in entrepreneurial and private leadership. And, uh, and it's just, it's all be a win-win process. Okay, so um, thank very much to uh, Danirva, Cecilia, Solange for their experiences and telling us about their models of inclusion, and we'll see you in the next opportunity. Thank you very much.